Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today's video is for uh, beginning uh, de obfuscation with DE4 dot. So if you haven't used this tool before, this is uh, perfect for you. And now the, I will put a link below to the GitHub page for DE4 dot to the repository. GitHub is a um, it's mainly for sharing source code. So some people have trouble finding the binary, the compiled binary for this program. Um, now GitHub is not for sharing binaries, obviously. And um, if you want to find the binary, you might find it in the release tab. In a case of uh, DE4 dot, you will find a link in the readme description. So if you scroll down, um, you will find the markdown interpretation of the readme and there you see uh, a section for the binaries and you will find a link to the build server where there is the the for dot um, archive so simply download it from here and you have a compiled uh, binary there that you can use so once you did that and extracted the archive that's what it looks like so the photo.exe will be your uh, program to use for 32-bit files and um, let's check this out. So the, the most simple use case is you just drag and drop the file you want to deobfuscate in there and it will try to automatically detect the obfuscator. In this case it didn't find any and then it will apply the cleaning or deobfuscation on that. So even if it doesn't detect anything, it will attempt to clean some things, do some generic renaming, and um, that's it. It doesn't work here because the tool is not obfuscated. So, uh, but let's find us an obfuscated file. Um, you cannot only use it to deobfuscate, you can also use it as a as an obfuscator detector. So you provide the minus D option for detect and then minus R for recursive. So I can uh, tell it to detect uh, files in a folder and that's a samples folder. Here I have lots of samples I used in the past month for making videos and you see there are only um, three .NET files in there and it detected smart assembly for the alpha ransomware so that's a file it may be able to uh, deobfuscate now if you put it in there it says it detected smart assembly it cleans it and now it uses this um, smart assembly specific cleaning for the file and might be successful in uh, deobfuscating it. In case it's not there, uh, for every obfus or most obfuscators, there are even more options, but I think that's more a uh, topic for the advanced uh, usage of D4.0. Um, also, um, which is also more topic for the advanced usage is how to extend the product so you can uh, add in support for your own obfuscators that you want to deobfuscate with. So, um, but let's check out something else now. I also wanted to show you. It has a very good um, usage um, or help for the user. So, but I see that it might be overwhelming um, because it has so many options. But actually, it's not so much if you keep in mind that those are like um, those are the obfuscator specific options. So you say, okay, for agile.net, if that's detected, then I have 
these options also available to you uh, change the way it's being deobfuscated. But um, the most important ones are shown in the end, which as examples, which you might want to use. So here's another example where you tell the for dot to obfuscate all files in this folder, to, to deobfuscate them, and put the results, the cleaned files, into this folder. Or you just uh, tell it to deobfuscate all these files, three files at once. Um, or you say, I want you to deobfuscate file two, and please put the deobfuscated file into file two dot out. So it ha doesn't have this um, slash cleaned dot exe um, name, but this name here with dot out in the end. And um, this is the last example that I also want to show to you because I think it's you need that more often than the other options right there. Um, there is a protector that's a freeware called Phoenix Protector. And this protector has a string protection option. So let's try this. I will not obfuscate a malware. I'm not sure that this is appropriate uh, when I basically protect a malicious file. Okay, uh, so options. And I will only apply the strings obfuscation. So, okay, and protect this, put this onto the desktop, please. Okay, it creates a folder where, and there's the protected version of Megadumper. I don't want to save it. And now let's take a look into the protected version. That's the protected version. I drag it into the end space so we can. Oh, I, that's from previous. Let's remove this. Okay. Protected version. And if you just search for some string references, and you, you will see this. So, this um, obfuscated strings in the binary by. Um, well, turning them into another string, and then there's a call to a decryption function that will return the correct string. So you cannot directly see in the binary what this string was originally. And that's some kind of decryption right here. And um, if you put this file into d4. Dot, It will not be able to find an obfuscator and it will attempt to change or to deobfuscate this. So let's put the clean version that we just created in here and check it out. But all that changed was it renamed the methods that have these, well, nasty names. Uh, but the method is still there and the strings are still not readable. So we want to change that. We want to read the strings again. So what we can do now is we use uh, the option that is described here. And it basically says, well, we need the input file. We need the string type. There are these um, string decryptor types. So delegate says use a delegate to call the real string decrypt decryptor. So what it will do, it will load the assembly using assembly.load. It will execute some code and then when the decryption function that we provide, when it's called, it will check the return value. That means it executes the file that you put in there. It's a dynamic way to retrieve the strings. So be careful. If you use d for dot, always do that in a safe environment. Don't attempt to do this 
if you deobfuscate malware, of course, don't attempt to do this on a machine that is not meant to be infected. Uh, it might not infect, but it, it depends where the code is, where the malicious code is. But uh, yeah, you shouldn't um, take any risks and just use default in a virtual machine that's meant for malware analysis. Okay, uh, the input file. That was this one. And we want the string type uh, delegate. And we want the string token. So what is that? The, the token of a function, oh, we need that one here. Uh, yeah. The token of a method, um, is like an ID or you would have to read up on the structures of how, how you, uh, .NET files assemblies are made up so you know that the token is in reference to a table where all the methods uh, and the classes and so on are listed. Um, so it's kind of an ID and you see that the NSPY for instance will show you this token uh, by putting it into a comment to the uh, decompiled code. And in this case, it's um, 60001F4 uh, for the decryption function. If there are several decryption functions, you can give it uh, several tokens. Um, that also works. 1F4. And we will attempt to clean that. Okay. It says something didn't work. I think that's because I, I should remove this one. Yes, let's close that. Remove the old one. Do this again. And now it saved this to make them cleaned without complaint. Uh, check out the cleaned version in the NSPY. And now, if you go to that location or any location where there are string references, and you see the strings are deobfuscated. So it worked. We did it. And yeah, that's it for today. I think that's um, already a good basis to start the obfuscation. And it's quite easy, actually. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please put them below. And um, I hope that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.